My name is Alan Sprentz and I started Hair of the Dog Brewing Company in 1993 and I will be retiring this year, uh, 2022. Hi, I'm Terry Ferrendorf. I have been a brewmaster since 1988 and I'm the founder of Pink Boots Society and I have a whole line of places that I've worked and things that I've done. But it's all for you and it's all for beer. Art Lawrence, co-founder of Portland Brewing in 1984. 1994, I started Cascade Brewing, Raccoon Lodge, and uh, I've since sold the companies. Alan, one of the things I really appreciate about you is your chef background. And I think that played a major part in what you do because I consider Art a businessman. I consider you an artist as I consider myself an artist. And so, you know, I've seen what you've done with your beers over time, and you've been super innovative with the strong beers, the wood age beers, the unusual yeasts, shall we say, <laughs> things like that. And then when you opened this place, um, and you started up Fred Fest, and the unusual beers that you asked people to make for it, the strong beers, your wood age program, all that stuff, I mean, heck, your first brew kettle and you used it for years and years was a giant soup kettle out of a kitchen. We're still using it. <laughs> That's what I thought. I was thinking, I bet he's still using that soup kettle and, and the artist and the chef that you are. And I think that that has had a huge impact on what we get to experience as beer drinkers. Thanks, so, uh, you know, there's not, um, it's not every brewer that has your kind of background and can bring your you know, chef and art, artistic sensibilities to not just the beer, but the business as a whole. Oh, very humbling to hear. Well, it was very nice to kind of give things inside of me a voice. And I'm glad you appreciate that. Oh yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, you guys. Yeah, Alan, you're the first one that I drank, other than a high octane sour beer, that's something like this. And so you you took the the eight to sixteen ounce to the top. You were the first ones around doing that, and I don't know if there's many others around the country that have mimicked you, but I know that you have probably spawned a lot of interest with other brewers in doing that. And I know when I would come by here. I didn't want to go drink a 5% beer. If I'm going to come here, I'm going to drink one of those ones. <laughs> Don't light a match around me when I leave kind of thing. <laughs> so I think that you've broken the ground and maybe when you quit doing this, maybe the mold is broken. Yeah, that's hard to believe, but thanks, Art. Thanks. And it, you're still active in the Pink Boots Society? Oh, I am. Um, thank goodness I don't have to run it anymore. Um, you know, I was there in the early days. I ran it for nine years. And, uh, you know, my wing length, as I say, wing tips is only so far. You know, I want to make sure that they reach the highest bar possible. I want them to step up because tomorrow's beer industry um, leaders, if we want to see women on that team, we got to have women's voices heard. And you've been recognized for your leadership? I was by the uh, Brewers Association in 2014. That was very gratifying. Uh, that was before I, I, that was at seven years. That was before I passed the baton on. And I'll tell you, there were many times around that time where I wanted to just give it all up because it took every non-work day, waking moment. It was my hobby among hobbies. My husband kind of wanted his wife back too, honestly. And, um, but I had to, you know, that helped me to keep going. That was actually great. So. Yeah, your role in helping women become more of a part, an equal part of the industry, and is huge. And uh, I'm sure uh, you'll have more of these kind of events about that. But just being a part of uh, the industry and being a brewer is uh, an important thing. We're all, you know, trying to make things that we feel inside of ourselves. And it's nice that other people enjoy that as well. And so it's great that you can you know, be a part of this. Thank you. You know what I'm most impressed with? Among many, many, many things that I'm impressed with about you is you had the foresight to start the, the Oregon Brewers Festival, which has just been such a tradition and it's huge and it, it's, um, it, it's world changing in its own way. 
because how many other states and people and places have decided to emulate that with what you've done? Um, it put Portland on the map as a beer place and a beer destination. It certainly has helped our economy with all the people that fly into town and stay in hotels and go out to the bars and the restaurants. It's great. But what also is amazing that on top of that kind of world changing um, um, influence that the Oregon Brewers Festival has had is your impact on sours in the state of Oregon and the West Coast. But when you and Ron started doing those wood aid fruited sours, it blew up the map in Oregon and uh, you know, it, it changed the world. So I just want to tell you how grateful I am for all that. Well, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. When I moved to Oregon, it was um, an eye opener that people could own breweries. And I think I spent a lot of time on Flanders drinking beer and watching Fred up there making it. Um, and it's amazing that you've gone on to not only open another brewery, but be so pivotal in the beer festival business. I think you've consulted with people in other states and other countries about beer festivals. Uh, and I think the Oregon Brewers Festival is uh, an example of how a good festival should be run. Well, thank you very much. It was a challenge and I, we didn't know. We all got surprised by it when people showed up at Waterfront Park. No music. I don't even think we had food the first year out there. I'm not sure. There might have been some food. Get a bunch of cakes in a park and people will show up. And it was, I guess it was that simple. But it worked in Portland. Maybe it doesn't work every place. It was a special time to be able to taste all those beers in the same location. Yeah, and that was one of, I'll give credit to Kurt Widmer on that, because he said, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna make ourselves unique. And Kurt, you know, he wouldn't go out and say it, but just by being there, and you didn't have to say anything about our beers in Oregon. They were better than what the other beers were in Washington or Idaho or Montana at that time. Yeah, Terry, I know that you broke a lot of wind for the ladies to get into it. And I want to know, what about the local? I mean, you're a Portland person. What about the ladies in Portland that are brewing that you've influenced? I don't know if I influenced them other than just being a role model. Because anything I may have, say, broken ground on or been a good role model for, they have taken that and busted it wide open. So they have taken anything they may have observed from me, because I didn't teach them personally, and they have taken that to the next level, beyond what I could have dreamed. So I have to say, the women brewers in Portland are incredible. They are, they inspire me. You know, I mean, I may have inspired them, I don't know, but they absolutely, positively inspire me. There are brewers, there are brewery owners, and they, they are rock stars. They are rock stars. So I'm, you know, I don't know if you could say you're proud if you don't, not sure you had anything to do with it, but if I had anything to do with it, I am proud of them. If I didn't have anything to do with it, I am inspired and amazed by them and just encouraged to see that women are going to maintain and be a part of this industry well beyond my retirement. So I'm pleased with that. I mean, at this point, Pink Boot Society is not just women brewers. I don't know if you know that, or women beer professionals. Uh, it, it's, it's women or those who identify as women or non-binary who are um, brewers, cider makers, wine, spirits, kombucha, all of them. Pink Boot Society needs to continue to evolve as this industry evolves. And I'm kind of old school. So I am glad that I fired myself because Pink Boots, to stay relevant until we have gender parity at the top levels of all these fermented, fermented beverages industries at the ownership level and the brewmaster or equivalent level, Pink Boot Society has a place in society and we are game changers. We are um, revolutionaries and I'm proud to be a part of the, the beginning of that revolution. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we can chill out and just. Party. <laughs> <laughs>